Wrestling Federation Heavyweight Champion, Rick While the names Vince McMahon and Hulk Hogan have been body slammed by controversy lately, it's impossible to ignore how popular they had made the WWE, then WWF, back in the 80s and 90s. In 1989, the maniacal McMahon had a genius idea to make Hogan, already a megastar and a longtime world champion, even bigger. Let's make him the biggest Hollywood actor too! Enter No Holds Barred. Hulk Hogan's first starring movie role and the first movie wrestling crossover event ever. Oh, and did I mention it featured Friday favorite Tom Tiny Lister as the mega heel? Damn right, let's go. Years before WWE Studios came into existence and gave us <clears throat> Gems, as the Scorpion King, the Marine, See No Evil, and, by God, the Chaperone, all led by WWE superstars, Vince McMahon got into movie making with its precursor, Shane Distribution. McMahon might have played it safe with his wrestling storylines, but not when it came to the company's promotion. If anybody's gonna kill my creation, I'm gonna do it. His risk taking is what led to genuinely awesome ideas like the Attitude Era, rock and wrestling, and even the creation of WrestleMania. But in 1989, McMahon had the bright idea to produce a movie that would glorify the already mythological might of Hulk Hogan. The Hulk, without a doubt, is the most awesome figure in professional wrestling today. Hogan, who had dabbled in movies, notably as Thunderlips in 1982's Rocky III, would star as Rip Thomas, World Wrestling Federation heavyweight champion. Uh, gee, what a stretch there, Hulkster. Rip is the biggest star on TV. Uh, you can bet he put that in the script. So big that he's single-handedly killing the ratings of struggling network rival World Television Network, run by the evil Mr. Brell. Burrell is played by character actor Kurt Fuller who, if you were around in the 80s and 90s, you were basically trained to loathe this guy. He always played sniveling weasel characters, usually of some type of authority, as he did in Ghostbusters 2 and later in Wayne's World. Never mind how a single wrestling champion can destroy an entire rival television network, Details like that are well beyond what No Holds Barred has to offer. I know this is not normal, but it's something that has to be done. You see, when you, when you care like I care, if you care that much, you'll do it. Brell decides the best way to beat Rip is to hire him away. Of course, the heroic Rip is having none of this lousy idea, to which Brell responds by calling him a jock ass. You jock ass! An insult I didn't really understand then, and it's worse now. While the script for No Holds Barred is credited to Dennis Hacken, there's significant contribution by McMahon and Hogan. Shocker considering the number of times the WWF is put over, uh, that's wrestling slang for winning at the expense of another, in casual everyday conversation. You also see their influence in the action, which makes Hulk Hogan look more like the Incredible Hulk. Never is a better example than when Brel's goons try to kidnap Rip in a limo, and Rip kicks the car so hard that he leaves dents and moves the entire car from side to side on the road. Not only that, when the limo gets to its destination, Rip literally punches himself through the roof, launching into the air like he's the damn rocketeer. He then proceeds to, quote, rip him, his catchphrase, mind you, 
until one guy literally poops his pants. They even like zoom in on it. What's that smell? <laughs> the action is atrocious, and there's a reason why the Hulkster never became a legit action movie star. You better run, you better run for your life. His punches look fake, which is funny considering he's a professional wrestler and he's incredibly slow even though Hogan is at his physical prime. That's the level of humor and action you're getting out of No Holds Barred, but it's an odd mix of silly, childish jokes and uncomfortably vile acts of violence and sexism, which is a criticism you could lodge at professional wrestling as a whole during that time. Brel eventually gets fed up and starts his own wrestling show, enlisting the aid of the massive and intimidating Zeus aka Tiny Lister, with a Z shaved into his otherwise bald nugget. Here's where some of the uncomfortableness comes into play. Zeus, after challenging Rip time and time again, finally decides to hit him where it hurts by crippling the wrestler's geeky brother Randy. Bro also hires the sexy Samantha, played by former model and see no evil, hear no evil actress Joan Severance, to seduce him. But Rip is such a good dude, and look how his butt glistens while doing push-ups, that Samantha can't bring herself to do it. So Bro hires some more goons to kidnap and rape her. Yeah, this movie is all over the place. Suffice it to say, Rip has accepted Zeus's challenge by now. Sort of earned it. No Holds Barred culminated in an epic battle between Rip and Zeus. Steel girders, an epic crash and even an electrocution were involved. It was as chaotic and deadly as it sounds. The best of the best. Stay away, you ass. Vince McMahon loved this and did something unique to promote the movie. He created the No Holds Barred, the movie, the match pay-per-view event, which essentially saw the entire film play out for the paid audience. That was then followed by an actual Hogan-Zeus match that had been pre-taped. Not only that, but McMahon kept the No Holds Barred fun going for months, bringing in Zeus for a series of matches culminating in Hogan and his pal Brutus the Barber Beefcake versus Zeus and Randy Macho Man Savage at the No Holds Barred pay-per-view in December 1989. The hook was that Zeus, angry over losing to Hogan in the movie and being billed below him, now wanted to defeat Hogan in real life. Huh? McMahon was smart though. At the time, there was no blurring of the lines between wrestling and real life. Your character is who you were. You know, dude just sitting there showed me that film clip when I saw myself back there, stuffed that check down Brel's throat. That's the bad guy in the movie. It kind of reminded me of the Million Dollar Man. So fans easily bought into the idea that Zeus really hated Hogan. Wrestling was incredibly goofy at the time and made absolutely no sense. So this fit right in. You would dare attempt such a stunt as this nowadays, where kayfabe, or the illusion that wrestling is real, has long since been broken. Then again, you get a lot more pre-taped cinematic matches now, so I guess that's the balance. No Holds Barred was savaged by critics at the time. What Hulk or his advisors have done is taken a multi-million dollar image here and really trashed it better than anybody else could do it for them. I already heard about one 12-year-old girl who walked in and walked out of the midway. So you have yeah. to make, be very bad a very bad film to get a child to walk out of the picture. I mean, Director Thomas J. Wright would go on to work on some iconic television shows, including Millennium and Firefly, but never became a big time filmmaker. The movie debuted at number two at the box office with $4.9 million, behind Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. That ain't too shabby. Again, Hogan was a gigantic star at the time, and seeing wrestlers in movies of that scope was rare. Hello again, everybody. This 
This is Bean Teen Okerlund, along with my broadcast colleague, Jesse the Body Ventura. This week, the World Wrestling Federation Heavyweight Champion, Rip, to defend against the man you consider to be a strong challenger in Jake Bullock. Hogan has said that the movie cost around $8 million. And with VHS DVD sales, it ultimately earned around $16 million. However, the film has continued to be the butt of on-air jokes by McMahon and others, usually about how much money the film lost. So, I mean, who really knows? Hogan may have been the first professional wrestler to become a big movie star, but he never reached the levels that Dwayne Johnson, John Cena, and Dave Bautista are seeing now. He would feature in numerous films over the years, such as Mr. Nanny and Santa with Muscles, which should tell you everything you need to know. Annie Freeze. Zeus, aka Tiny Lister, would continue to be intimidating AF, but also beloved as the bullying Debo in the Friday movies. He even played president in The Fifth Element and continued to dabble in professional wrestling. With the creation of WWE Studios, the WWE has had its share of hits and embarrassing misses. But it's undeniable that wrestling movies have improved significantly with films such as The Wrestler, Fighting With My Family, and Ready to Rumble. Alright, alright, cool. I'm just kidding about that last one. It's, it's, it's awful. It's also undeniable that none of this would have been possible if No Holds Barred hadn't been there first to make that hot tag. <laughs> 